Hi everyone, so it's the moment you've all been waiting for, um, and a lot of you have gotten very vocal about where's the vitamin C video? I was sick for two weeks, so I was literally was not able to do anything for two weeks. There was nothing that I had enough energy to do. I couldn't film because I didn't have a voice. I was blowing my nose every two seconds. I still kind of have a voice. It's just two octaves lower than it normally is, so I'm very sultry and husky. Probably disappointing for anyone who meets me now and then finds out that my voice is like dolphin in a blender. Um, done. So I'm finally getting around to doing it. Um, just before we start anything, the, the vitamin C conversation is going to really occur on the blog. I've been working on this blog post for a good month and a half because I want it to be as thorough as I can possibly make it, where there's pretty much nothing left that, or no questions left unanswered, because I really want, um, I want a guide that I can refer to. Do you know what I mean? Like, I want, I want to write this, this vitamin C post that I wish existed, essentially, um, that really provides every single bit of information that I can from a variety of sources. Um, there is good vitamin C information, but a lot of it can be biased, or it's from sources that aren't necessarily um, the most reputable, or whatever the case may be. So I want to try and make this post as, as um, strong as I can, essentially. And I think a lot of you are still unaware that I, I have a blog and I have um, a website that I write blog posts on. Um, it's just tofcam.com, but a lot of things that you guys have asked to be reviewed are reviewed on the blog. I really only save YouTube for if I'm talking about a general topic or sort of a big idea or a collection of products. I use the blog for individual product reviews or really, really thorough ingredient guides or anything that um, needs, that takes a long time to explain and that has a lot of um, complexity to it is done on the blog because I think it's just so much more practical and it's much easier for me to be able to organize my thoughts that way. I also post a lot on Instagram. I, I feel like there's still a, a large portion of you who um, don't keep up with me on Instagram and I'm on Instagram literally every single day. It's so easy to be able to talk to you on there um, and I can update you immediately on products that have worked or haven't worked or, or anything like that, whereas YouTube I have to block out my schedule. So if you really want to get in contact with me or you want to sort of keep up with, you know, how product trials are going and that sort of thing, Instagram is still the best way to do it. So what is this video? This video is really sort of an un introduction and an overview of um, the topic of vitamin C. Full product reviews and more more in-depth information is going to be on the blog, so um, it'll be linked everywhere. And I totally understand why vitamin C is such a, um, a topic of curiosity for people. It's talked about everywhere. You know, people talk about it on daytime talk shows. People talk about it on blogs. You hear about it um, in the food world, and it's a great ingredient. But the vitamin C that we're talking about today is in context of skincare, and it's a very specific. Um, there's very specific forms of vitamin C. Um, oranges are not vitamin C, they have vitamin C content to them, but the vitamin C content that's in them um, in the form of vitamin C is different than the vitamin C that we often apply to our skin. So a lot of people um, equate orange and oranges with vitamin C, and to be fair, yes, oranges have vitamin C, but so do strawberries, you know, so does spinach, so do apples, so um, it's not necessarily limited to just oranges. But vitamin C is, um, it's a fairly magical ingredient, we, I'm sure we can all agree on that. It does a lot of different things, and I think that's why people really enjoy using it. Um, it has a, obviously, a super potent antioxidant factor to it, and antioxidants will neutralize free radicals, which can stem from pollution, just the, the environment, um, sunlight. It's just a rogue molecule that, like, seeks out other molecules and will kind of wreak havoc on the skin and causes premature aging. So vitamin C is a really great sort of invisible shield against the environment. So as a result, I like to use vitamin C during the day because that's when I'm out and I'm surrounded by free radicals and pollution. Um, Beyond the antioxidant benefits, vitamin C is known to be a potent skin brightener, depending on the version of vitamin C that you'll use, and I actually break it down in the blog which versions are best and the concentrations that they need to be in. Um, so you're getting antioxidant protection, you're getting bright uh, skin brightness, 
radiance. It's going to help to correct dark spots. Um, certain forms are great at treating the appearance of large pores. Um, certain forms are really great at um, kind of bulking the skin back up and kind of making it stronger on the surface. Certain forms of C are really great at neutralizing and minimizing the frequency and uh, intensity of breakouts. So vitamin C does a lot and it's also um, has been shown to reduce skin inflammation if you have um, dermatitis or anything like that. So it's a great ingredient obviously but the tricky thing with vitamin C is it's like it's finicky. It's like me. I'm like if anyone touches me I'm like don't do it. Uh, vitamin C is the same way. It's very temperamental, I guess, to say the least. It has to be um, in stable formulas, in stable packaging, depending on the type of C, which again, I just talked about on the blog post. Um, in general, it's, it's not a very stable ingredient. So um, it's very hard to find vitamin C formulas that are stable, that are effective, and that sort of check off all the boxes. So I totally understand why people are seeking it out um, and, and seeking out the best of the best. Another thing vitamin C does is it helps your sunscreen to work better. So sunscreens um, will protect your skin against UVA and UVB rays if they are in fact broad spectrum formulas. And vitamin C, again, like we talked about, it's an antioxidant. So sunscreens can protect you from the damage of the, U, of the radiation from the sun, but if there's any free radicals coming off of um, from from the sun, sunscreen can't protect you against that. So or can't protect you from that. So vitamin C paired with the sunscreen, it helps both to work better. And if you are wearing a vitamin C during the day, you have to put sunscreen with it. Otherwise, it's just sort of a moot point. In general, I prefer vitamin C serums because I think having all of those good ingredients and as close contact with the skin as possible or in a formula where the molecular weight is lower or the particle size is smaller and it has a better chance of getting into the skin, that's where I'm like, sign me up for that because I really do want it um, there for protection and for prevention. So for me, you know, most vitamin C moisturizers, I don't really see the point. It's, um, you could do worse for yourself. Um, then put a vitamin C moisturizer on. I mean, it's still gonna have some sort of antioxidant protection, but it's not gonna give you as much um, correction as a serum would. And serums tend to have higher percentages of the vitamin C in them anyway. Vitamin C is, is uh, one of those ingredients that I find myself using at least six out of seven days of the week. Pretty much every single morning I get vitamin C in my ritual somehow. Sometimes I'll use a booster and, and pair it with a serum. Sometimes I'll use a serum on its own. Sometimes I'll pair that serum with um, a hydrating serum just to kind of condition it. Um, I usually find that with vitamin C, serums that are slightly drying, the serum that helps to kind of curtail that is the Jordan Samuel Hydrate Serum. This is my favorite hydration serum ever, but pairing a vitamin C with this has really helped to reduce the um, possibility of dehydration on my skin. Um, and that's the thing to be said about vitamin C's is, um, especially if you're using something that is ethered, um, which can sometimes have sort of an alcohol content to it, it can be drying for the skin, so that's something to, to keep in mind, is if your vitamin C feels drying for your, on your skin, it probably is. So just pair it with a nice hydration product and it should help to kind of cut the effects a little bit. There's a lot of products that have vitamin C in them, but it's not the focus of, of the formula. The products I'm really talking about and the vitamin C's that I use are usually formulas that are specifically targeted and marketed as a vitamin C product. Um, having, you know, 5% ascorbic acid thrown in a moisturizer somewhere is not bad. It's not going to harm the skin, but it's not going to be corrective in the way a 15 or 20% would be. So I think the thing to remember is it is about concentration and the context of the formula as well. So if you're really trying to correct the appearance of dark spots or, or discoloration on the skin, um, you want to make sure that you are getting something that's targeted, um, it's a targeted vit vitamin C formula, just to make sure that the investment that you're making in your skincare is is paying for itself, if that makes sense. Um, I'm just going to give a, a quick little overview of the vitamin C's that I've been using lately. The blog will have a, a list and mini review of every single vitamin C that I've ever used and my thoughts on it, um, which to be very fair is not a ton. There's still a lot of vitamin C's that I haven't tried and I'm happy with the ones that I'm using right now. So for me, there's not a huge, uh, I don't have a huge desire to sort of seek out every vitamin C serum in the world. The the ones that I'm using are, I've only got a couple. And that's because vitamin C expires. So I don't want to have five of them open at a time because I know I won't finish it. It takes me hard, a long enough time to finish up just one bottle. Um, and that's with 
using it fairly consistently, so I don't like to have too many vitamin C's open at one time. The one that I use today and that I've been really enjoying is the Dr. Dennis Gross C Plus Collagen Vitamin C Serum. So this is 3-O-Ethyl uh, Ascorbic Acid, and it's water and fat soluble, so it'll really get into the skin. I mixed it with Jordan Samuel Hydrate. Um, it has also some just sort of traditional ascorbic acid in it, a little bit lower on the list, and I'm not sure the percentage of this, but I, I have been really liking it. It's a gel serum, so um, it has a little bit more cushion to it. It's a water and glycerin based formula, so you can see it's not immediately just running down my hand. It definitely kind of sits and kind of sticks together, if you will. Um, another vitamin C that I love and I've been using for a long time is Paula's Choice C15 Super Booster. This I do use as a booster and I sort of um, will mix it in with my other products. This one's getting towards the end of its life. I need to finish it up. And this is truly watery, so I mix this always with some sort of other serum, whether it be a hydration serum or like a milky serum or whatever the case may be. Um, the thing about vitamin C is you want to make sure that once it's expired, throw it away. Um, and you will notice when it starts to expire, like you can see this one's starting to turn a little bit yellow. It's not quite bright orange when it's or like a dark brownish orange. When it's that color, you gotta chuck it. But um, this is starting to s sort of degrade. Um, Power Dose by um, Dr. Brandt, this is Power Dose C. This is tricky. It says there's three forms of vitamin C, but I can only see two on the ingredient list. But I'm almost done with it, and I love this, and I reach for this all the time. It's a booster as well, so I pair it with um, some other type of serum. Um, and I don't personally mix boosters in with anything else but serums, because I think the way that serums are intended to absorb into the skin, attaching the vitamin C to it, it'll help it pull it in. Uh, the Dr. Dennis Gross Triple C Peptide Firming Oil. This is, like they say, three blends, uh, a three blends of vitamin C, or a blend of three forms of vitamin C. You know what I'm trying to say. Um, and it's a very slick oil base, so it's a squalane and silica base. It doesn't have a ton of density or viscosity to it. Very lightweight. I would say if you are drier skinned and you or you're somewhere where the air is really dry um, you might find that using something like this in place of your serum and you know treating this as a serum will help to give you the treatment that you're looking for but also give that boost of cushion if you will uh, last but not least I've also been using the Brooklyn Botany ultra pure vitamin C which I've reviewed uh, I is on the blog um, on the blog post and I don't want to give too much away because I think that review sort of speaks for itself. But this is a um, sort of a milky, stretchy serum. It's definitely thicker than the Paula's Choice, but thinner than the Dr. Dennis Gross. And that's 10% L ascorbic, which is um, good for sort of daily protection. It's not 15 is ideally where you want to be if you're wanting to correct the skin. But for protection, I think 10% is totally fine. And before anyone asks, um, it will be on the blog, but before anyone asks, um, I, after this video is done, after I'm done filming it, I'm gonna go return this. Something I do want to mention is, in general, vitamin C is an expensive ingredient to use, just sort of with the, the knowledge that I have of sort of the cosmetics industry. Vitamin C is not cheap, which is why most of them are more of, you know, an investment piece. Um, and not only that, sort of building the formula is, is challenging and making it stable and having it do what it's supposed to do and really function effectively and properly as a vitamin C is, is challenging. So, um, you know, I would say if you are able to, making the investment in a good vitamin C serum, it doesn't have to be the most expensive one in the world, um, but just a really, a truly a good quality one and a stable one is going to, to sort of, um, it's going to pay for itself, if you will. Um, you're going to have to use the product for a lot less amount of time um, to really see a difference in your skin than if you were to get a cheaper vitamin C that's not as good. Um, so yeah, I mean like you're looking f anywhere between 50 and $100 is about average I would say for vitamin C serums, which is obviously expensive, but it is something that you would be using every single day. So um, it's not like you use it once in a blue moon and then before you can finish it, it expires. Um, vitamin C is something that you would want to be using daily, ideally. Um, so that is sort of the little introduction, kind of mini overview of vitamin C. Be sure to check out the blog post because, like I said, I've been putting so much time and effort into it. And um, if you are, if I mean, 
I also just wanted to be, sh be sure you're aware that I have the blog because a lot of people have asked, you know, multiple times to review a certain product and it's been reviewed on the blog for a long time. And I have in every video, the link to my blog is included in the description box. So it's always there. Um, but this is just me talking about it. Um, and Instagram too, like, please let's go to Instagram together. It's so much easier for me to keep up with you guys. And I want to be able to keep up with you. Um, it's just, I don't always have access to like getting my laptop out, getting on YouTube, you know, that sort of thing, whereas if I'm on my phone and I'm waiting for the train, I can instantly reply to you and that sort of thing. Yeah, if you have any questions, be sure to read the blog post because they hopefully will be answered. Um, if they aren't answered, then you can feel free to leave them below. Uh, and I will talk to you guys really soon. Bye.